I love PC gaming. I made the move from console around five years ago and I've not looked back. I mean, we're talking unlocked frame rates, better performance, max settings, open platforms, emulation, free online gaming, modding, multiple monitors, absolutely incredible when it goes to plan. Now, I often play online with a group of mates across multiple platforms. Some of us are on PC, some PlayStation, some Xbox. Every now and then, someone will have an issue that stops them playing for the day. Maybe the game won't load, glitches, crash city, something like that, and they are just out. Now, do you know how long it's been since one of those people was a console player? Well, it's probably never happened to us, actually. It is always the PC people that have the problem. It's a lot more simple for a console. Every unit has the exact same components in it. The manufacturers can test those, make sure they're reliable, and everything is kind of the same. The games are optimized for one experience and things just work. Now, when you're looking at a PC, it's very different. There are genuinely millions of configurations of different things out there on the market. Developers have to optimize for as much of those configurations as possible. Some components are just better quality than others. Some will last and some won't. Lately, I've hit some issues. In fact, I've hit a lot of issues. It's really rocked my channel and it's set me back quite a fair bit. Today I wanted to talk you through what's happened and what I've done to deal with it. It started a few months back. I was getting infrequent crashes when my PC was under a heavy load. Could be gaming, rendering a new video, things would fire up to max and it would just power down. I had a rough idea what was causing this. I'd upgraded my PC over time and I didn't think I was giving enough power to the things that were inside it. I was running a 3090 GPU. My power supply was only 750 watts. Now really you should be running 1000 watts with a 3090, but I'd got away with it for some time and never really had any issues. I run my 3090 with a slight undervolt so it jaws a bit less than it would at stock. Now that works really well for the Founders Edition 3090s. But over time I've added the odd extra thing to my build. I might be talking an extra fan here, an SSD there, and it's all tiny little incremental increases in voltage. And I think that just pushed it over the requirements and it meant when things were fully firing it just wasn't enough and it would blue screen. So I nipped out and I bought a new power supply. A 1000 watt Corsair RMX series, a decent power supply, it should be totally up to the job. I was fairly happy and I thought I'm not seeing any issues here. A couple of weeks then pass, I go to make a new video and as I go to edit it, I just hit constant crashes. Now every now and then it would just fail to boot and when it does fail to boot, I'd get a little light flash next to the RAM symbol. So I thought, well, clearly I've got a RAM issue. I need to replace them. I took them out, had a little play, give them a clean, put them back in and everything fired up but I started to see these infrequent issues over the next couple of days. Now, I don't have any spare sticks that I could test and make sure, so I thought, well, I'm nearby to a local gaming computer shop, let me just nip in, take the PC in, and have them verify that it is the RAM that's the problem. Now, I do know how to troubleshoot, and I've built plenty of PCs in the past, so I know how to change gear, but I thought, you know, if I don't have a spare to check, let's just make certain that's what it is before I spend any money. I left the computer with the shop for a couple of hours, then I got a phone call just to confirm, yeah, your RAM has failed, but, Actually, your motherboard's failed and that's what's caused the problem. There's a bent SATA port connection which is causing a short and that is what's actually led to the issue. So, okay, that's not great. Now I need to replace two things. Okay, I can deal with that. I've got some work to do. Let's just get it fixed so I can get back home and finish editing my video. So I pick up an Aorus Elite B550 motherboard. Now that's a slight step down from what I was on. I was on an X570, but when I compared the specs, it didn't look like I'd actually be missing out on much here and I was quite happy with the swap. So that evening I plug everything in and I go to start work. Work. It doesn't load. It doesn't load. It doesn't load. Oh great, I've spent quite a lot of money here, my computer still isn't working. Now because it's the weekend, I can't take it back into the shop. They're not open on Monday. I don't want to lose the weekend, so it looks like I'm stuck troubleshooting myself. Now I was getting a boot fail that indicated a corrupt OS, so I thought maybe it needs a new BIOS or a BIOS repair. I can do that. I'll stick one on a flash drive and I'll start that process. I started it, and guess what? It failed midway through. Now I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even get it to the point where I could start the repair again. So I had to set it aside. I thought at least the bits of stuck in it will be under warranty from the shop so I'll run it back to them on Monday and they can deal with it. I lose this weekend. Next week I take it back to the shop and have to leave it with them. I come in back the next day to collect it and they said yep it's all sorted. What had happened is your OS had put some of its data on the secondary drive and it then couldn't access them when it went to rebuild the BIOS. We fixed that and it should all be good to go. Perfect. Now by the time I get home, we've lost a couple of weeks here. The videos that I was working on editing previously are now out of date, they're irrelevant and I shouldn't be posting them. So I have to start again. So I start recording. Now I record that day and the next day I go to edit. When I go to edit, crash. Then more crashes, then it won't even post. By this time, I am more than frustrated. I really need quick resolution here. 
So next morning, I'm back into the shop and they are bemused. There is no reason why they should still be seeing issues. They really tested the unit before they sent it back to me and it's failed almost on arrival. I get a call the next morning and they say, you're not gonna believe it. Your AIO cooler has failed and it's burnt out your CPU. You're going to need to replace both if you wanna get it working again. Now that's really not good. That's a lot of money that I don't really have to hand and I've gotta get my unit back up and functioning so I can get back to work. So I go shopping locally and I pick up a replacement CPU and I also pick up an air cooler. By this point, I don't really have the money to be investing in a replacement water cooling system. I'll have to do that at another point. Let's just get the unit up and functioning. I found a good deal for an air cooler, so I just got it going. So I'm up and running, but that's nearly a full rebuild. Over the past few months, I've replaced the power supply, the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, and the cooling. And the really frustrating thing is that I've spent a lot of money and none of it's got better. They're all like for like replacement. If I'd have known I'd been replacing all of that equipment, then I'd have gone to a next gen platform. I'd have gone to Ryzen 7000 and DDR5, but I didn't. Every time I thought of just replacing that one piece of kit. So it's cost me a lot and nothing has really improved. Now in all this time I've missed loads of videos and it's a really pivotal time. It's all around the kind of release of the PSVR 2 and I had loads of content planned. I've managed to sneak in the odd video in between crashes, but it's nowhere near what I'd hoped to achieve. And it's really affected the channel. The views have flatlined because everyone else has been so active and I've kind of pulled back. So I've got a lot of work to do. You know what? That's fine. We graft, we'll get on. But I'm glad to say things are at least back to form and I can start flinging out some new videos. I've still got all the old gear that was classed as broken. It does make me think, did they really identify the right thing at each point? And is some of that gear actually fully functioning? I was kind of surprised when they said that the motherboard needed replacing because I hadn't really done anything to that motherboard in some time. I am kind of interested in using that gear in a second build and seeing if any of it does really work. Using all of it at once is just asking for trouble, but I might just fling it all together, stick in a cheap GPU and see what happens. So, after all this, do I regret investing so much in a PC? Should you just stick to a console? Hell no. While the PSVR 2 has been really good and I've enjoyed my time with it lately, it's hitting a lot of those VR experiences I need it to hit. I still do love a gaming PC and it won't stop me from investing in the future. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know what had been going on and why I'd been so quiet lately. If you want to help me get back on track, then a like for this video would go a long way. I would love to see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.